Hey everyone, Polish Pete here with Bass Utopia. Today I'm just going to talk to you guys about spool technology and some of the things that have been advancements in, in uh, breaking technologies and bait casters. So the two reels I have here on the table in front of me are a Tatula 100 and, a t t and the new Tatula SV. Uh, the Tatula 100's price points like $159.99. You're looking at a $200 price point on the SV reel. And a common question people ask is, is how does SV technology work? What's the difference? How what what what's it doing differently to make it so that it's easier to cast lighter lures and backlash less? So I'm going to show you how a traditional braking system works from Daiwa and. This does come into play a little bit with other manufacturers as well with centripetal spool speed and how the magnetic brakes affect things, but this is pretty unique to die with this particular system. But uh, since they are so popular right now, we thought we'd show you some of the features and benefits and how it works. Um, with a traditional Tula 100 spool, as you see right here, uh, not only is it magnetic braking, but it's also centripetal braking. That's a, a common argument out there in the real geek world is what's better, centripetal braking or magnetic braking? Technically, MagForce Z is both. So spool RPM, so however fast this spool is spinning, centripetal force does affect how much this brake works. So what this gold piece here is, is called an induct rotor. So this is affected by braking, uh, by magnets that you're exposing it to by adjusting your brake dial on the side of the reel. So on dial reels nowadays, they're about numbered one through 20. If I have this turned up to the uh, number 20, I'm exposing it to the most amount of magnets. And as I cast, this spool starts rotating. The faster it rotates based on speed, this induct rotor actually starts traveling outward. So I don't know if you can see it there, I'll put it forward. If, if as the spool is spinning, I'm using my right hand here and I'm pulling outward on, on this induct rotor and it's traveling outward. The further out it goes, the closer to the magnets it is, the faster it slows the reel down. Okay, so you can imagine how it look on a chart. It's speeding up, getting to its maximum speed and, and the brakes getting affected by the magnets the most and it's slowing back down in this and this induct rotor starting to travel back in so as far as casting distance goes that's where this spool this technology shines now the hot new sv spools that have been out for a while now and you're seeing different uh variations of this spool and different reels and all those different reels price points come down to bearing count frame quality all these different features but what i'm just going to focus in on is how sv works so the first thing right off the bat you can notice is the induct rotor on a traditional brake is a lot smaller than an SV induct rotor. So much more braking power on an SV spool. They tend to be lighter weight spools too so that not only is that magnet affecting the, the spool speed more, it's also because it's so much le less rotating mass because the spool weighs less, it's affecting it even greater. The biggest difference and what makes SV technology so much different than a traditional brake is instead of requiring spool speed or RPM to, to activate the brake, it's mechanical. So as before with my right hand, I was pulling out on that induct rotor. I'm just pinching this and holding it still. I'm not gonna move this hand. I'm using this hand and I'm turning the spool as if it was spinning. And as you can see there, it's actually causing the induct rotor to travel outward without the spool having to go at a fast speed. So picture I've hit my thumb bar, I'm making my cast. The minute that spool starts to spin, you're getting braking pressure from an SV spool. So it's helping me when I'm skipping, throwing a light lure, throwing into the wind, anything like that, I'm getting braking pressure immediately as I make a cast. So it makes a pretty considerable difference in their performance of the spool. So think of it this way, if, if I'm throwing a bait that's easy to throw and I wanna throw it long distances in the wind, let's say a three quarter ounce rattle trap or a three quarter ounce football jig, half ounce and up, and I wanna just throw it as far as I can, a traditional spool to me is more effective. But when I get into lighter weights or I get into tough casting situations, this SV spool is really really shines, it, it, it shows off uh, Daiwa's engineers uh, technology what they've been able to cook up here uh, and right now I think for all around fishing whether you're a beginning, beginner or an expert there's applications where the SV spool is going to shine for you so I check them out uh, at omniafishing.com